In the low carbon future, we all need to reduce our reliance on fossil fuels like gas and oil and use more electricity. The challenge facing electricity network operators is to adapt to meet the increased demand for electricity from customers. We also need to prepare our networks for the connection of local low carbon generation like wind turbines, solar panels and combined heat and power plants. All of this puts electricity networks under stress. The challenges of the low carbon future will lead to an increase in network fault current. The current that flows when a fault occurs on the network. Normal current and fault current are very different. Normal current flows through the network and fluctuates well within the capability of the network. But fault current is an instantaneous surge of energy which flows towards the point of a fault. As it stands, our existing network is vulnerable to costly damage from this increased fault current. Some of our equipment could fail, meaning longer power cuts for customers and costly repairs for us. Upgrading our substations to deal with this increase in potential fault current is expensive and an inefficient use of existing assets. So what can we do? Our solution is the RESPOND project. RESPOND will deliver a fault level assessment tool, which calculates the potential fault current and enables one of three innovative techniques designed to manage fault current on the network. This will maximize the use of existing assets, minimize costs, and keep the network and customers safe. This is how the network operates now. When a fault occurs, the current on the network flows directly towards the fault and is cut off by a circuit breaker, stopping the surge of fault current before it causes damage. This high voltage circuit breaker can disconnect up to 21,000 amps. But what if we need to connect additional demand or generation to the network? This will increase the total potential fault current to above the capability of the high voltage circuit breaker, leaving the substation vulnerable to damage if there's a fault. Circuit breakers in a substation are set to trip at specific times to stop the fault current flowing. Our first innovative technique, adaptive protection, is about how we sequence the tripping of circuit breakers. Adaptive protection changes the order in which these circuit breakers trip. In this example, the equipment on the network can handle a current of 21,000 amps for three seconds before it might be damaged. Here, the circuit breaker on Transformer 1 trips one second after a fault, taking away 10,000 amps from the fault current, enabling the existing high voltage circuit breaker to operate within its capability. After one and a half seconds, the HV circuit breaker trips. This sequence tripping allows the existing equipment to manage a network with higher fault currents than it was designed for. Adaptive protection could also enable us to give customers more choice and allow them to sell a fault current limiting service to us, which is our next technique. Here, one of our customers owns a combined heat and power plant, or CHP, and exports surplus electricity onto the network. In the event of a fault, the CHP would create additional fault current and overload the high voltage circuit breaker, which could damage the network and cause longer power cuts for our customers. But if the installed circuit breaker was managed by Electricity Northwest via a commercial agreement with the customer, we could set it to trip after the fault as we did with Transformer 1 in the previous example. Removing the fault current from the CHP and enabling the existing high voltage circuit breaker to operate within its capability. The HV circuit breaker will then trip at one and a half seconds, remove the fault from the network and allow the CHP to be reconnected. Our third technique is a fault current limiting device known as the IS limiter. When a fault occurs, the IS limiter is activated within half a millisecond so fast that neither the transformer nor the generator contribute to the fault current. This reduces the total amps flowing to the fault to a level well within the capability of the high voltage circuit breaker and prevents damage to the network. As current on the network fluctuates throughout the day, RESPOND's fault level assessment tool will calculate potential maximum fault current. If the fault current exceeds the capability of the assets, one of the three techniques will be enabled, ready to operate in the event of a fault. RESPOND avoids early replacement of network equipment. 
maximizes the use of existing assets, speeds up connection of low carbon technologies for customers, provides flexibility and cost benefits for customers engaged in the fault current limiting service, and reduces the long-term network costs for all of our customers.